welcome back to the Express at Poco's Lee Square for the new exhibit, Celebration of Light. Later on the show, we're going to show you the Hanukkah menorah design competition, but right now, it's the amazing works of art created by Burnaby-based artist, Brayden Hammond. He's one hot artist. Lamp working is a process where you use a torch to melt the glass. It's powered by propane and oxygen. It's around 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so very hot and very effective and efficient way to melt the glass. And create art. Braden's been doing it for around seven years. I mainly make jewelry, uh, and the jewelry is rings, earrings, bracelets, necklaces. And then when it comes to the art, I make bowls, I make teapots, I make chandeliers, I make goblets. I also make glass dragonflies. I decided to go take a class in Santa Cruz, California to, to learn and I had such a great experience that I really was hooked on the molten glass and, and just hot glass was just what I was drawn to. Once I accumulated the basic skill set, I could then watch other glass blowers and by watching them I could basically take their knowledge from whatever they showed me and then be able to apply that myself. His work sells throughout Metro Vancouver in many places quickly. Stocks here are low. People seem to really be drawn to it. I just sold uh, two necklaces last week um, and a ring the week before, um, which is a great problem to have because we want it to sell. For Braden, working with glass is meditative. I just love that I can just lose track of time and melt glass and just get into the torch and just think about the glass and really concentrate on that. The payoff is also in the end product, says Braden. The next day is kind of like Christmas where you come in and you see all the work that you've done. So you see the natural progression and you, uh, you kind of understand you know, what you did better and what you need to do in the future. So uh, I think the visual of what you have in the end is very rewarding. It's just like having honey on the end of a, of a pencil. So the Burnaby native even teaches so that others can share in the experience. The molten glass is just very attractive. And I also think that the play of fire and glass together, the amazing light that uh, gets thrown through the pieces while you have them is just definitely what people are drawn to. In Vancouver, I'm Peter Kim for The Express. Braden's jewelry has been spotted on fashionistas all around Metro Vancouver and also featured in fashion magazines. So if you go to his website, BradenHammond.com, you can do your celeb spotting and some personal shopping. But don't do it just yet because we've got some other famous faces for you. The Giggle Dam Theatre has been entertaining and sometimes shocking audiences for almost 10 years. And they've got a new comedy just in time for Christmas. Okay, girls, swarm up time. The vocal pipes are getting ready to be turned on for another performance of Port Coquitlam's Giggle Dam Theatre. But as the cast prepares backstage, the audience eagerly awaits for the three-hour comedy musical that has now become one of the Lower Mainland's most loved batch of dinner theatre. It's mayhem from the moment you arrive. You're greeted um, by all the entertainers in character, and every show has a theme. So every show will re revolve around a theme. Right now we're doing Christmas with the Beaverstons, so it's a full redneck Christmas down home country. And when you arrive, you are a relative of the Beaverstons, and we haven't seen you forever, and so we search for the meaning of Christmas together. It's a riot. The mayhem on stage is the brainchild of co-owner Sheila Sharma. Sheila and her husband Mark have been running the Giggle Dam Theatre since 2001, with Sheila writing and directing every single show. Typically, uh, from idea to stage is about four weeks. So it's really crazy. I'm writing at the same time they're rehearsing. So I'll write an opening, I'll write a number, I'll give it to them, they'll start rehearsing. I'll write, they rehearse, I'll write, they rehearse. There's very few actors that are able to do what I just described, and so we're very fortunate to have this group of actors, for sure. And this group of actors really know their chops. Along with acting, singing, dancing, and playing their own instruments, the Giggle Dam cast creates new material every night, all with a little help from their audience. It's participatory theatre, so the audience gets involved in our shows here and the atmosphere just becomes like a great big house party. If the host has fun, the guests have fun and it snowballs out of control. So it's not a place where you just sit and watch a show, it's a place where you sit and become part of it. We'd like to give and receive.
The Giggle Dam Theater not only makes your belly hurt from laughter, they fill it up too. Salmon three beef salmon. The theater's four-course meal is a large part of the audience experience, with the cast taking and serving the orders. But what has kept the Giggle Dam Theater running for all these years is their wow factor on stage, and perhaps special appearances from rock and roll legends. If you think he's sexy and you want his body, said there is nothing like this in the Lower Mainland. So you can stay in Vancouver and enjoy all the wonderful theater that they have there, but you need to come out to Port Coquitlam and see this because you are not going to see anything like this in Vancouver or anywhere else in the Lower Mainland for that matter. Thank you, Giggle Dam. Thank you very much. I'm Mana Mansour in Port Coquitlam for The Express. A damn Beaverston Christmas runs seven days a week until December 29th. And you can book your dinner theater experience online at giggledam.com. Now, laughter, of course, is one great way to spread the light, but so is artwork and a lifelong learning. And we've got that up next. Up next on The Express. It had to be three-dimensional, of course, because it had to be a functioning menorah. Poco's Hanukkah Menorah Design Competition. <laughs> the history of the steam engine in Burnaby. So the steam comes down here and goes... The into Express. The this here. is your local voice. at Poco's Lee Square Community Arts Village. The current exhibition, Celebration of Light, also includes artists from across the country competing in a Hanukkah menorah design competition. The menorah competition, oh, what were the specifics you were asking from the artists? Well, the specifics were that it had to be three-dimensional, of course, because it had to be a functioning menorah. For the whole exhibit, it's really refreshing to see how the celebration of light can be interpreted. For you, um, is it fun to see all the different ways it's coming oh, out? Oh, I, I love the ways it's come out. I, th I think it's great. I'm looking forward to actually purchasing one or two of them, so yeah. supporting the artist is part of this as well. We receive Konakias all the way from as far as Nova Scotia. So some of them have come a long journey to make it here. The menorahs on display are here as, as a filler and to show the different types of menorahs or Hanukkiahs that people collect. And that's part of it. The one that we've brought in, which is the Dove one, is actually from Israel and was made in Israel. And uh, it was brought back by my wife when she did a trip to Israel um, back uh, almost 25 years ago. So. Well, happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah. The winner of the Hanukkah Menorah Design Competition receives a $1,000 prize thanks to money from the Coquitlam Foundation. You can also vote for your People's Choice favorite you have until January 16th, and that winner gets a prize as well. Now you're watching The Express, and it's time now to head over to the Burnaby Village Museum to learn about the steam engine. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lauren Gray. I work at the Burnaby Village Museum and I run the steam engine. So we have four 
stationary steam engines here at the museum, two horizontal and two vertical. And here I'm running one of the horizontal engines here. This was made around 1910 or so. So it's about 100 years old, cast iron. It'll last for a long time. Now this was used originally in a sawmill to run the various saws. Steam engines were very popular in sawmills because they could burn all the sawdust to boil the water to power the steam. So they basically had free power. So the steam comes down here and goes into the valve chest here. And the valves send the steam first to one end of the cylinder and then to the other end. And that is pushing the piston inside the cylinder back and forth. So the steam is using its pushing power to make the piston go back and forth. And that is what's running the steam engine. Here we have the connecting rod that's turning the crank wheel in the back. And that turns the eccentric rod here which goes back into the valve chest and pulls the valve. Our flywheel here keeps momentum going in the engine, keeps it running. And off the side of it, we have the power takeoff with the leather belt. And that transmits the power from the engine to any machine you want. Here we have a grinding wheel running. Now here is the governor. Now that thing's spinning around. If the engine ever went too fast, those balls would spin out and lift up a valve and slow the engine back down again. And then down here, we have the automatic oiler. So off the eccentric, you've got a little rod here that's cranking the oiler, and that pumps the oil into the steam, which carries it into the cylinder and keeps everything nice and oiled. So the valves run the piston, piston runs the crank, crank runs the eccentric, the eccentric runs the valve. The whole thing runs itself. Please come down and visit us here at the Burnaby Village Museum. Currently, the Burnaby Village Museum is celebrating a heritage Christmas, and you can learn more at their website. But that's not the only event happening around the Lower Mainland. We've got some more ideas with today's Express Spotlight. Enjoy an evening of Christmas carols. The concert will include music of Dickens' time and present a program of songs and readings inspired by Dickens' famous Christmas story. Have you thought about being a big sister? Attend an info session to get more information on the experience of forming a long-lasting bond with a little sister. This open roundtable is a way to create dialogue, encourage unity, and create a peaceful, free society. The topic to be discussed will be a life of growth and purpose. And that's it for today's Express from the Celebration of Light exhibit here at Poco's Lee Square, which is running until January the 16th. I'm Johanna Ward, and on behalf of all of us on the show, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time, and happy Hanukkah. Thank <laughs> you.